Hey, it's Dave. I got a few emails about my mini series that I was going to do about batteries, um, asking for some information about them, but I'll be honest with you, uh, it just wasn't very good. But I have taken out the 12 batteries I had from my original RX-8, and I've got them here, and I am discharging them and charging them. So I thought it was a good opportunity to really just show how I'm testing how much capacity each of these batteries has, and how you do charge a LiPo battery, how balancing works and how you use constant current and constant voltage to charge these batteries because they're kind of concepts that aren't really fully understood by people so I know there's lots of information out there but I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to share what I know with uh, my subscribers and people who are viewing this channel now. So first thing is I've got these batteries here so if I just spin it round here we go these are all the batteries out of my original car and there's some more over here as well now I've got 13 in total. This one here has failed. You can see here's a bulge in the side and it's all cracked. Obviously some cells within there have failed completely. So um, I didn't ever use that one. I used all the other 12. And uh, they're all fully charged at the moment. So I'm just going to show you how I test the capacity of any one of these. So I've got these rubber things just over them at the moment so I can't accidentally electrocute myself. So this is one of the cells. You can see there it's, if I get it in focus, it's a 38 0.4 nominal, 30 amp hour, 1.1 kilowatts, and a max charge of 43.8 volts. So that's the spec of the battery. And what I've got over here, if I just reach over and bring it in, this is my gizmo that will discharge the battery and um, and tell me the watt hours or amp hours that it managed to get out of the battery in total. So you can buy these on eBay. They're fairly cheap. I think 20, 25 quid, something like that. Um, I've made some modifications to this one because I've had this is actually the third one I've owned because the other two uh, just failed and they failed where the heatsink contacts the device that generates heat which is obviously how it dissipates the power out of the battery. Um, so what I did with this one because I didn't want another one to fail I took the heatsink and fans off I placed an additional copper plate in between with some contact adhesive um, or heat uh, transfer of agent. Um, and put it back together again. This is now much firmer on there, but you must always remember not to lift it by this component because it does have a habit of coming loose. So this is brilliant. You simply connect it up to a battery and um, and turn it on. So I'll just connect it up off camera because I'm only got one hand spare. I've got the device here now. I've spun it around because the positive and negative ran the other way. Um, sat on the device, connected to the battery. It has its own power supply uh, with our transformer. It's about nine volts, I think. And it has a little screen readout here. So it's telling me at the moment that the battery is at 40.4 volts. Um, it's got a capacity, energy and time. That's actually for the previous battery I was discharging. So you don't have to do it all in one go. You can turn the device off, turn it back on and it will remember where it was. So all I have to do is keep my finger on this button. And it will reset that. So still the battery is still at 40.4 volts. And the current is at naught amps. It will dissipate about 160 watts. So if I turn this little dial here up a little bit, it will start to flow some current. So there we go. We can see it's got 3.2 current in uh, 3.2 amps, should I say, in the top right corner. Um, wattage is the amp times the voltage. So that's doing about 120 watts of power. It's rated to about 160, but that's kind of where I like it to be. So as we can see, it's got it's funky. It lights up green and now it's basically dissipating 120 watts of power and it will time on the timer and count how much power it's using. So there we go, because it's used 1.1 watt, 1.2 watt. It's also got settings on it, which allow me to tell it when to stop. So I've got this set to 30 volts. When the battery gets down to 30 volts, which is about right for these, that's 2.5 volts a cell, uh, it will cut off, it will stop dissipating and it will beep. So it tells me that it's finished. I can come here and record the values on there. So I'm going to let that run and then I'll run through how we uh, get it back charged back up. Right, so here we are. I think it's about four hours later. Uh, we can see on the display it started to flash 30 volts. There we go, warning, beeping, and telling me basically that it's got down to 30 volts and it's not going to discharge anymore. So what I can do, if I turn the resistance up, it will stop it discharging and I can then get the values. So here we go, 486.51 watt hours, 12.78 amp hours. Now, when you consider these batteries are 1,152 watt hours, that's got obviously less than half of its capacity left. 
Uh, the fans will stay spinning whilst the device is still hot, so it'll still just continue to cool itself down. Uh, when the temperature of this thing, it's got temperature on here actually, yeah, so 44 degrees, that'll tick down, 43, that'll just tick down. When it's done, it'll turn off. I can record the values there, uh, with how much battery power that's got left, and job done. So the next thing to do is charge it up. So let me just plug it all in, and then I'll talk through how the charging of these batteries works. So to understand how lithium-ion batteries charge, you need to have a bit of a basic understanding of Ohm's law. So that's voltage equals current times resistance. So those three values, current, resistance, and voltage, are all proportionally linked to each other. So if you increase current, then for the same resistance, you're going to need more voltage. And if you increase resistance for the same current, you're going to need more voltage. They're all proportional. Change any one, and you'll change the others in the circuit. And that's how these batteries charge. They charge on a constant current constant voltage basis. Now that kind of doesn't really make sense when you consider that they're all proportional to, to each other, but it makes sense when you consider that an empty LiPo battery is almost like a short circuit, so consider it to have a very, very low resistance. And then when you have a fully charged LiPo battery, they have a very, very high resistance, almost you know completely cut off, uh, so you go from open circuit to shut circuit. Uh, not quite, but that's the best way of looking at it to get your head around the way it works. So the way a charger works, uh, and you have to have a special charger that can fix the amount of current. So if you imagine that I want to charge all these batteries, and I'm going to fix it to 3 amps. Now the pack has a set amount of resistance, which is quite low to begin with, which means the output of the charger, the, ver the voltage is going to vary. I've got a fixed current, so your uh, I value is fixed. The resistance is going to change as the resistance value comes up, which is going to change the voltage. The voltage value is going to rise as well to overcome that resistance for the same amount of current. So initially you're pumping fixed current in until you get to a set voltage. And that's where the charger is quite clever. You set the charger to say what is the max voltage as well as the max current. So for these batteries it's uh, four, oh, yeah, 43.8 volts. And when the charger gets to 43.8 volts, it knows I can't go any higher. So even though the resistance is rising, it's not going to rise the voltage anymore. So the only thing it can do at that point is to start to lower the current so that that V equals I times R formula still makes sense. And then as the current goes down, the current will eventually reach zero. There'll be no current flowing because the resistive uh, capabilities of the uh, battery are full essentially or, or high a high resistive value for the same voltage 43.8 no current's going to flow and that's when you know the batteries are charged so i just spin this round and i'll show you the charger actually working so here's my lab charger i've got it set to 43.8 volts and uh, i can change that by changing this dial so i can actually set precisely how much i want to give out there we go 43.8 and at the moment it's giving out no current but I can set the current using the current dial as well so if I just start it charging you'll see what will happen here so I've got it set to 9.5 amps um, and you'll see this voltage is going to just slowly climb as the battery charges it's going to climb quite quickly to begin with but then it will slowly get to 43.8 when I get to 43.8 that will start to drop and so uh, I think what I'll do, I'll do a quick time-lapse video of that and uh, you'll see that in action. So as you see, dead simple. Uh, the voltage rose at 43.8, that's your constant voltage, and the constant current then just drops down to zero and was done. You might find it hovers around 0.1 amps for quite a while, that's just the cells balancing if you've got a battery balancer on there. Uh, don't be surprised by that, probably best to leave it for a while just to let it balance uh, the cells within the actual pack. So I've got these 12 packs here now, which I'm gonna, I've got them all checked to see roughly how much charge they do. 
about 40 to 60 percent uh, state of charge they've still got left so a lot of power they can still hold I'm going to stick them on eBay now I've got one other one which has died I'm actually going to take the 144 uh, cells out and um, I don't know, I might just do some experiments with them, shoot them with a gun, stick them in water, I don't know. I've never actually done that, I've seen a few funny videos, so I might do something with that, uh, just see see what explosions I can create with some uh, cells out of it. So, dead simple, subscribe if you want to see some more videos, and put some links below as well for the eBay stuff, and I'll catch you next.